Now, one of the things that many people have sort of always wanted to know is protein. How much protein should I have in my diet? It's a very contentious one. And what you will variously hear from different PTs, and it's one of the bugbears that I know for a fact from, say, registered dietitians, that they actually find that people who are personal trainers give out the wrong information in terms of how much protein that you fundamentally need in your diet in order to hit the gains that you fundamentally want in order to build up muscle mass. Now you'll hear loads of stuff that if you're kind of, kind of in a calorie deficit, you know, can you put on muscle mass? Well, yeah, you technically can, provided that your deficit that you've got is a relatively high protein diet because it means you're satiated, it means that you're not going to have the cravings for sweet stuff later on to make your life a little bit easier. So <clears throat> it can work in regards to that. So it will obviously therefore need, require you to go to the gym, do various all at home, do body weight stuff, more high, um, high volume of reps, um, probably quite a few sets as well in order to get those muscle fibers tearing, ripping, and therefore with the protein you have, you know, you extend out to that. I'm also ignoring the fact that unless you are say a bodybuilder per se, or professional like strongman, or basically on someone who's on extra juice, that's not what I'm talking about. Those who do the protein there are on a monumental different scale, but that's because of the style of training that they do, the diet that they've got to do in order to hit the targets that they're on. I'm on about a normal bog standard person who either is significantly underweight, or is of a normal weight, and then sort of someone who's incredibly overweight. Now, how you then do this, and this is from dietitians of the world, as opposed to just some Mickey Mouse PT or something that you might have heard online. One thing you fundamentally get, and it's, there are misconceptions in terms of, you know, can it lead to, say, kidney diseases? Um, they wouldn't expect, expect you to have a high-protein diet. If you've got kidneys that have got some sort of precondition in regards to it, because that would put them under a huge amount of stress, because kidneys are under stress anyway, in terms of the job that they're trying to do. And by putting them under extra stress when there's an issue with them, it's like you wouldn't exactly go ride a bike with a tire that's about to sort of thread, you know, as in pop. Because if it does and the tire pops, then you're absolutely screwed because you'd be better off just changing the inner tube and this, that, and the other. Okay, so you catch my drift in terms of what you want to do. Doesn't mean you can just change your kidney, just for the record. But the main bit I'm talking about is for people with healthy kidneys, it wouldn't necessarily apply too much. Again, this is research. This is, although some dietitians might say slightly, slightly different. But one thing for sure is the range that you would go from. If you're incredibly overweight, then knock yourself down in terms of the amount of protein you have to about 0.8 up to those who are incredibly underweight to 2.2 because obviously you want to try and build up the muscle of that individual because of the uh, condition that they have. Someone in my position, say for example, who's of a relatively healthy weight, you're looking at the range from about 1.2 okay, times your weight to up to, to 1.2 is the low end of the range, and realistically for someone like myself, up to 1.6. For me to go up to two would just be ridiculous because I'd be just taking on too much protein and the amount of diet, the, the type of training that I do, I ain't training over an hour or two hours a day. I'll probably go up to about 45 minutes, maybe to an hour a day, but even still, for me to even go up to there, there's no problem, the body just get rid of it and I won't be using that protein as there. Also remember, some protein that isn't used is also stored as fat. And that is the last thing anyone really wants to fundamentally do, unless you're in that sort of specific, again, training regime that like some people are. are. So, how much to really work on? Do be careful when you're working on your ranges. Just for a conventional heavy sort of, or generic sort of weight that you're in, in terms of how active you are, Think about, well, if you're going to the gym a little bit more and you're using it, then go to the higher range of about 1.6 per times that by your actual um, weight. So I'm around about, give or take, mm, it depends what I'm wanting to do in terms of the training, but I can have up to 90 to 100, gra 100 grams really of protein a day. That's quite a substantial amount. I'm not training excessively hard. If I did then, yes, I'd probably need to take on a bit more. But even then, there is a limit that you need to do. So all this in terms of, if you think about a gram per one centimeter, that's out to BS, right? Because there's no way that I need 183, cent, 183 grams of protein in my daily diet. It's never gonna happen, it's ridiculous. So do bear in mind what it is that you're doing in terms of the range that you have. That is for you in terms of protein.